Hello everyone, this is Sorry and Target welcoming you to a new series here on the channel where I'm going to be ranking aspects of the Carnivore's games or mods. Specifically today, we're ranking every official game in the Carnivore series from worst to best. Original, I know. Or I guess it'd be least favorite to favorite since, as we all know, I love all things Carnivores. And this is all just my opinion because I am not the final authority on all things carnivores. I do not own this franchise or community. I do not control my fellow fans. I'm just a guy on the internet with a microphone and a passion. Okay, so to those who have watched my retro review series where I reviewed the official carnivores games, and if you haven't, you can check it out here or at the end of the video. A lot of what I'm saying here might sound familiar, but I wanted to elaborate on and maybe expand upon some of those thoughts in a one-stop shop for why I view each entry in the Carnivores franchise the way I do. Now I intended for this to be more of an all-encompassing items ranked video rather than a traditional top 5 video, but when you lump the mobile ports and reboots together as I often do, you end up with six Carnivores games, so throw in an honorable mention and you've got a top five list anyway. And even though this list is purely based on my own subjective opinion, I did want to try and be as reasonable as possible and include objective, validated merits each game brings to the franchise, as well as some generalized community impressions for additional weight. So, this list is absolutely my own personal opinions, with the here's why I think that thrown in for support. And of course, this list is just how I personally rank the Carnivores games. If you disagree or have your own list, I'd love to hear what you think, so be sure to let me know how you'd rank the Carnivores games in the comments section below. So guys, without further ado, let's begin with number 5. So topping our list at number 5, we have the 2001 classic, Carnivore's Ice Age. I know, I know, just bear with me. <laughs> there are several words that can be used to describe Carnivore's Ice Age. Dull, rushed, uninspired, lazy, bland, boring, the list goes on and on. But the one word that I think best describes the finale to the original trilogy of Carnivore's games is unfinished. Admittedly, this dinosaur hunting franchise does not have the best track record when it comes to official releases. In fact, it can be argued that there are more bad Carnivore's games than good ones, to the point where the fan-made content has surpassed the official content in terms of quality, consistency, and popularity, an argument that I myself often make. And I think Carnivore's Ice Age supports that argument, not because it's so spectacularly bad, but because it's just so meh. Even the other entries in the series generally considered bad by the community, like Cityscape or the reboots, either fail so spectacularly that it's noteworthy, or at least include concepts and elements that are executed so well that they are standouts in people's minds that overshadow the negativity. And Carnivore's Ice Age does have a lot of cool and creative concepts hidden within its files. The whole Ice Age theme, poachers, custom kill animations, a bonus animal, there's a lot of potential this game could have offered. But each idea feels so half-baked and rushed in execution that it's hard to feel passionately about them either way. Again, even in Carnivore's games where the concepts do not work, they at least fall flat on their face to the point of evoking anger or humor. Carnivore's Ice Age is the equivalent of an indifferent shrug. Many of the elements aren't even finished, either feeling like a last second addition to meet a rush deadline, or are just completely removed from the game. It's also completely lacking in any sort of story driven theme. Where the themes of Carnivores 1 and 2 focus on establishing the prehistoric alien world of the dinosaur planet, and then the colonization efforts of Dino Hunt Corp respectively, the theme of Carnivores Ice Age is snow and trees and ice. As I've said ad nauseum here on the channel, I think supernatural horror would have made a great theme for Ice Age, with the cold, dark, 
cabin fever-esque nature of the polar regions, working to create a darker turn to the mysterious nature of the dinosaur planet. Couple all of this mediocrity with some of the most boring maps in the entire franchise, an animal roster filled with animals either unfit for the environment or just plain boring by comparison, and a weapon lineup literally copy and pasted from the previous game, it's hard to not feel disappointed by how rushed and unfinished this game feels, especially compared to how many of the mods have taken Ice Age's ideas and just flat out done them better. And for that, Carnivore's Ice Age takes the number five spot. Moving down to the number four spot, we have the next gen reboots, Carnivore's HD and Reborn. If unfinished best describes Carnivore's Ice Age, I think the phrase that best describes the Carnivore's reboots is wasted potential. If I had to split and rank Carnivore's HD for the PS3 and Carnivore's Reborn for PC separately for the sake of this list, Carnivore's Reborn would take spot 4.5 and Carnivore's HD would take the actual number 4 spot. If you'd like a more in-depth explanation as to why I think so, you can check out my review for the games, or you could just take my word for it that Carnivore's HD is the superior game. To say that the hype surrounding the release of these reboots was huge would be an understatement. After 15 years, the original dinosaur hunting game was finally being remade for modern consoles with shiny new graphics. I mean, everyone was excited. But as Carnivore's HD launched, that excitement kind of faded into disappointment, then denial at the disappointment, then grief at accepting the disappointment, and finally full-blown anger because Carnivore's HD was disappointing. This was it? This was the grand Carnivore's reboot we'd waited 15 years for? The potential was so there. The groundwork was absolutely laid. Gorgeous graphics with beautiful environments, high quality and fantastically lifelike dinosaurs, fun and engaging weapons and gunplay. All of the bases were covered, but not enough was done with them. With only three maps, six dinosaurs, and four weapons, Carnivore's HD featured even less content than the 20-year-old game it was remaking. And although the original Carnivore's is extremely basic by today's standards, for its time, it was revolutionary and has outlasted many of its contemporaries by building a rich world and featuring modder-friendly technology. For its time, Carnivore's HD is skeletally bare-bones and offers no hope for community-sustained longevity. In today's context especially, Carnivore's makes up for its simple gameplay by enriching itself with a unique alien world full of mystery, suspense, and intrigue, the exploration of which has sustained the franchise through fan content. Carnivore's HD offers no such world to entice players to return, no mysterious structures, no uniquely alien looking dinosaurs, no themes of corporate interference and control, just basic, but fun, dinosaur shooting. And that's totally fine, that's all some people want. But if that's all you're going to offer, you need to give players more options than can be counted on two hands. Carnivore's Reborn promised to bring back the creators of the original games and add more content and continue supporting the game long after launch. And to an extent, that was all true, but somehow seemed to make the game worse. And then a month and a half after launch, everyone involved just disappeared without a word in classic Carnivore's developer fashion. The Carnivore's reboots are a beautiful, unpolished, and unfinished mess. They're the equivalent of a sturdily built, beautifully designed building foundation. You look at it and you go, man, that's going to make a great building someday. But the building is never finished, and so you're just stuck with some amazing potential that is criminally wasted. Although they tried and failed twice, what's good is really good, and what's bad is really bad. And for just how close they came to being something great, the Carnivore's reboots take the number four spot. Taking the number three spot, maybe at a controversial position, we have the infamous Carnivore's Cityscape. 
Carnivore Cityscape is a game that I and a lot of the community rail on often, mostly deservedly so. As an action-driven, run-and-gun shooter, it feels the least like a Carnivore's game of any entry in the franchise, and that's usually the reason for its divisiveness and ostracization. However, that's also why I think it deserves top 3 status on this list. Instead of being developed by Action Forms, the company who created the original Carnivore's trilogy, Cityscape was developed by Sunstorm Interactive, the company behind the incredibly successful Deer Hunter franchise. Which makes sense, considering that both companies were well known for developing successful hunting genre titles under their parent company Wizardworks. But for some unexplained reason, Sunstorm ditched the hunting genre and carnivore style entirely, bringing in new artists and engines and programmers for a wildly different and fresh twist on the franchise. And as a concept, this twist works. I think it's pretty widely accepted that the story and concepts behind Cityscape are phenomenal. It's just the execution of said ideas that fall flat. Kind of like the Star Wars prequels in my humble opinion. When you talk about the ideas and events of those films with broad brushstrokes, they sound incredible. But when you actually watch them with the details all unfolding in front of you, it's kind of like, oh. And that's kind of how Cityscape is. Excluding the details and just talking about the events of Cityscape in whispers and legends, it sounds great. On the brink of financial ruin, Dino Hunt Corp decides to bring their alien planet on the road in the form of a traveling zoo to boost revenue and interest. Suddenly, the dinosaurs overrun one of the transport ships, which crashes on the outskirts of an Earth colony, unleashing the dinosaurs into the streets, sewers, and subways. It is then your job to exterminate this alien invasion as a futuristic intergalactic agent or defend yourself in a hostile alien world as a rampaging dinosaur. This new twist on the concept pushed the Carnivores franchise in a brand new direction and introduced several pioneer concepts for both the franchise and dinosaur gaming as a whole, including dinosaur vs human multiplayer matches and allowing players to actually play as a dinosaur. In many ways, Carnivore Cityscape was the evolutionary first step toward infinitely more popular dinosaur games where these concepts excel, like Primal Carnage and The Isle. The new focus on the story of the Carnivore's universe also propelled the series in new directions, and opened the gateway for many of the story-driven mods that followed. The entirety of Carnivore's Triassic's plot with a desperate and defensive Dino Hunt Corp, creating their own genetically engineered mutant dinosaurs, stems directly from the impact of Cityscape's story. Without Carnivore Cityscape, we have no Carnivore's Triassic, and that's not a world I want to live in, do you? Objectively, is Cityscape good? I don't think so. At least, I can't defend it as such. It's not as computer-crashingly broken as its predecessor, Primal Prey, but it's still a glitchy mess, it's unfinished, unpolished, unbalanced, depressingly short and shallow and repetitive, and ultimately unfulfilling. But do I personally like it, respect it, and admire its risks and concepts? You're darn right I do. And for that, Carnivore Cityscape comes in at number 3. Now before I unveil the top two spots, I do want to give an honorable mention to the Carnivore's mobile ports, and I'm putting the honorable mention here for a specific reason. By process of elimination, plus a little bit of common sense, I think we all know what the top two picks are on this list. So if I unveil the number two spot, then throw in an honorable mention, there's no immediate follow-up to the surprise, so the build-up is kinda lost. So hopefully this oddly placed break will help keep the momentum of this list going. Funny story about this honorable mention, about a year ago when I first began planning the concept for this video, that's how long it takes me to get videos out guys, I had an entire gag planned around giving the mobile ports a fake honorable mention, but now, after all that we've been through with Andrew's communication and the hard work on the mobile ports, I am honestly and genuinely giving the mobile ports a well deserved honorable mention, and that is thanks squarely to him and to you guys. 
You guys spoke up and stood up for the legacy of carnivores, turning it from a half-baked, generic, malnourished dinosaur app to something that strives for consistency, quality, and is, as far as I know, back on its feet and well on its way to greatness. And Andre listened, gave us information that no one at Tatum had done for almost a decade, and has been working his hardest to make the mobile ports live up to the legacy that carnivores set before them. No, they're not perfect, and they've still got a ways to go before they hit the level of quality most of the carnivores' mods exude these days. But darn it, this whole story is too impressive. It's too inspiring. It's like the coolest community uprising story I've ever heard. And I got to be a part of it. Together, we have directly influenced and impacted the official releases of one of our favorite games. And not a lot of people can say that. If I had to split the mobile ports up and rank them separately for the sake of this video, I think Ice Age is the better of the two ports, as it's done more to fix the mistakes of its original than Dinosaur Hunter. I mean, it's hard to improve on something already great, looking at you Lion King, and almost every new addition to Dinosaur Hunter feels like a redundant misstep from Carnivores 2, whereas Ice Age is actively retconning or fixing Ice Age's worst mistakes like including more exotic prehistoric megafauna, more aggressive predator AI, individualizing important animals, matching the environment and sector themes in the aesthetics, and more. Plus, Dinosaur Hunter directly retcons cityscape, so there's that. Regardless, the carnivores' mobile ports have seen more life in the past year than Tatum gave them in almost a decade. That is special, and that is why they're getting an honorable mention. Now, before I unveil the number two spot, which again, I'm sure you guys know what the first two spots are going to be, let me just say, determining the order of these two was an internal battle for the ages. I went back and forth, over and over again. It feels like for every validated point to put one over the other, the other one would have something better, and I'd start the cycle all over again. Honestly, these top two picks could be interchangeable. And it's not even that one is worse than the other. In fact, I may change my opinion as soon as I hit upload. But for the sake of this list and the criteria that I've set forth, including one very, very important factor, our number two spot goes to, and it pains me to say it, the original Carnivores. For its time and place, Carnivores was revolutionary. When all the hunting genre had to offer was defenseless, pixelated deer in stagnant 2D environments, carnivores stormed onto the scene, adding immersive 3D worlds and prey that could turn predator in the blink of an eye. It introduced a rich alien world full of mystery and wonder, a bizarrely unique but fun backstory, and of course, dinosaurs. Everything was perfectly balanced. Well-designed maps created natural environments for animals to live and players to explore. Culturally and artistically beautiful alien dinosaurs that escalate from peaceful herbivores to dangerous carnivores. Fun yet challenging weapons that cover the basics of gameplay options and hunting tactics. And equipment that acts as a nice perk system providing pros and cons for their use. All enhanced with a state-of-the-art trophy room where you can cherish your prehistoric victories in revolutionary 3D. It is, however, comparatively simple and bare bones, especially by today's standards. Out of seven huntable dinosaurs, players can only select one to hunt with one weapon across one of six relatively small maps forever limiting the gameplay experience to a casual hop in, shoot some dinosaurs for a few minutes, and hop back out experience, never really providing the depth teased in the concept. But because it was the first of its kind and really jumps through the hoops to establish itself, it earns its keep at the number two spot. Unlike its 2013 remake, which decided to dumb down the exact same game just with shinier graphics, Carnivores is important. It is history, both for hunting and dinosaur games. And as you can tell, I pretty much have exclusively positive things to say about it. The only real negative is that it's a really simple game, but that's just a byproduct of its time. 
In fact, it's even a factor that some people actually still like about the game. Without the original carnivores, we have none of this. No mods, no community, no renaissance, no two decade celebration. So why in the world does it come runner up to, spoiler alert, its sequel? Well, when was the last time you played a Carnivores 1 mod? Ladies and gentlemen, I now present what I believe to be the best game in the official Carnivores series. The legendary sequel with twice the bite, Carnivores 2. Remember that very important factor I mentioned earlier that, despite how close they were, ultimately nudged Carnivores 2 ahead of Carnivores 1? That factor is modding, and by extension, franchise sustainability and longevity. I mean, guys, Carnivores as a franchise is alive today because of modding, and that exists thanks to Carnivores 2. Did Carnivores 2 add anything to the lore and world building of this alien dinosaur hunting franchise? Eh, kind of, but not near as well as the first. The maps are bigger, but arguably more boring. The new dinosaurs are, again, arguably lackluster and inferior in design and function to the originals. And the new weapons and hunting mechanics completely throw off the balance of the game. But. Carnivores 2's undeniably important contribution to the franchise is its expanded hardware, gameplay mechanics, and modding support. Carnivores 2 quadrupled map size, allowed players to hunt as many animals with as many weapons as they could afford, exponentially increasing the length of hunts, and just felt like a bigger, more expansive sandbox. With the openness and freedom that allowed players to hunt whatever they wanted, however they wanted. And it was this newfound technological freedom and expansion that paved the way for bigger and better things. After Ice Age tanked, Cityscape bombed, and for all we knew, official Carnivore's content was done forever, the community picked up the discarded reins, took a deep breath, and said, let's do this. And holy crap, they did. Between the tons of beautiful, professionally crafted and lore-focused maps, hundreds and hundreds of gorgeously cultured and canon-styled animals, and mind-bogglingly diverse arsenal of weapons, what has been created by the fans through modding has just up and left the official games in the dust. And yeah, the official games usually have better graphics and look prettier, but graphics don't make a game. Even in 2018, I still have infinitely more fun playing Carnivore's Triassic than I do Carnivore's Reborn. And speaking of, Carnivore's Triassic is still, almost a decade later, receiving updates and polish as the technology continues to improve. I mean, guys, we just unlocked pack hunting. That is huge. If that doesn't speak to the passion and commitment of this community, spawned and made possible by Carnivores 2's user-friendly build and modding support, then I don't know what does. And I know there are mods for Ice Age, one of those being, in fact, Carnivores Triassic, but when I think of Carnivores mods, what comes to my mind personally is Carnivores 2, the base where it all started where we tested out our first reskins, the assault rifles, the dumb big Spinosaurus, our first new models, brand new maps, new features. For me, Carnivore's modding is Carnivore's 2. I've often stated many times on the channel how torn I am between which I think is better. Carnivore's 1 with its rich world building and balanced hunting mechanics at the cost of a lack of content and limited gameplay, or Carnivores 2 with its expansive freedom and modding capabilities at the cost of world building and any real meaty content. Both have powerful pros and crippling cons, and oh how I've longed for the perfect game that is a blend of the best of Carnivores 1 and 2. Oh, wait, what's that? We already have it? A perfect combination featuring the world building and balance of Carnivores 1 with the technological expansion and sandbox freedom of Carnivores 2, and it's a mod? Wow. Carnivores Plus truly is the ultimate prehistoric hunting experience.
And that's just further proof, guys, of how passionate and dedicated this community is. Still creating content that simply outdoes the originals in terms of quality and quantity. All thanks to the freedoms ushered in by Carnivore's first sequel. Sure, an Ice Age mod may have perfected the formula, but Carnivore's 2 is where it all began. It's where many mods started and still thrive today. And because of that, we are still enjoying Carnivore's content 20 years later. And for that, I think Carnivore's 2 deserves the number one spot. Alright, so there you go guys. That is my personal ranking of the official Carnivore's games and why. And now, most importantly, I want to hear from you guys. How do you rank the official Carnivore's games? Which one is your favorite and why? I know lots of you guys were first introduced to Carnivore's through the mobile ports, and several people have told me that Ice Age is their favorite, and I know we have some dedicated Cityscape fans out there, so be sure to let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. I always love hearing from you guys. And guys, thanks as always for watching. Thank you for being patient and supportive and just giving me the encouragement to keep making videos. It's because of you guys that I do this. I love it and I hope you guys do too. And as long as you guys keep watching this content, I will for sure keep making it. Don't forget to please leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Please consider subscribing to stay up to date on all things carnivores. And links to everything including Patreon and social media are in the description if you are interested in checking those out. It would mean a lot to me. Thanks again guys, you are all truly the best. And I will see you guys next time. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching. I genuinely appreciate it and I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you do enjoy the Carnivore's games and Carnivore's content on YouTube and want to help support this channel, you can do so at patreon.com slash sorryandtarget. There's a link down below in the description of this video. As many of you guys know, this YouTube channel is not my job and it takes a lot of my time to work on videos. But I love doing it for you guys and every little bit donated helps me dedicate more time to making you guys the best Carnivore's content on YouTube. Thank you all for everything you do. I love you all, you are all the best. And I will see you guys next time.